Well, thank you very much, Prof, for your time. Now, why, um, wh wh can you explain to us the research and why you came to the conclusion that uh, the death toll might be three times higher? Yes, good morning and, and good morning to your viewers. Um, at the Medical Research Council, we've been tracking the number of deaths that are registered with the Department of Home Affairs. And we've been comparing the numbers against what would have been expected from the historical data. Um, the, that allows us to calculate what we call the excess number of deaths. Um, the number higher than what would have been expected. We, we um, took a step back and had a look at the overall um, impact during 2020. And as you say, we, we've drawn the conclusion that these excess deaths, which are about three times higher than the, the official COVID deaths, um, must be mostly due to COVID because of the very tight correlation in each province and in the cities, the correlation between the, the COVID deaths that occurred and were reported as well as the excess deaths. Mm -hmm. Explain to us just uh, in layman's terms what excess death is. What, 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 what is access deaths? I know that you say in your report that it's something that you realized was underreported at home affairs, uh, but what exactly is access death? So the, the access, um, it, it's, it's a measure that's used at a time of crisis, um, perhaps when there's a tsunami or a hurricane or, mm -hmm. or a war or a pandemic. And what we do is compare the actual numbers of deaths observed against what would have been predicted um, just in the normal course. So, so on average, um, we, we, we might have a thousand um, deaths in a certain place per week. And we've compared what was observed and that difference how much higher it is, is, is called excess deaths. Mm -hmm. um, the challenge with excess deaths is that we, we don't, we just know that they're extra deaths, but we don't have the, the detail about the cause of death. Um, that takes some time um, to be processed, that information. Mm -hmm. So we can rapidly look at excess deaths but it takes time to unpack what the actual cause was. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, we've had to assess what's contributing to the excess deaths by looking at the correlation with the, the reported COVID deaths. Mm -hmm. So Prof, if, if I'm understanding you correctly, uh, po probably uh, those who passed away with COVID are obviously those who, um, for instance, were in hospital and admitted to the hospital for that pandemic or for contracting uh, the, the pandemic. And uh, access death in this instance where things are being investigated, maybe some people uh, passed away at home and the uh, death certificate simply says natural causes, but it's not exactly clear if it was the heart, a liver, cancer, or maybe COVID-19. Am I correct in assuming that? You, you're absolutely correct. Um, the, the information that we have so far um, can only tell us whether it was a natural cause or unnatural. Um, the, their, and, and the confirmed COVID deaths, those officially reported, we think are, are coming through the hospitals where it's known at that point in time and it's a different surveillance system that's been used to collect that data. Um, and those are confirmed and known to be COVID deaths. Whereas from home affairs, the only information we can get is whether it was a natural cause or unnatural. Um, the system of producing detailed cause of death information um, is, is a, a paper-based system that has manual um, 
you know, people have to go through it and code it and then capture it. So we're quite behind with processing that information, as are many countries. It's not unusual. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some countries that have electronic systems, data capture systems, who are being able to provide very rapidly that information. All right, All right, Professor Debbie uh, Bradshaw, uh, the Chief Specialist Scientist at the South African Medical Research Council, thank you for your time.